come back to the line. Our final topic this week is sanctuary campuses. <clears throat> Since Donald Trump became the president-elect, there's been a lot of questions about how immigration policy might change during his administration. President Obama created the DACA program, that's def Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Now, that was as an executive order, as you might remember. Some young people who were brought to the U.S. as children were eligible to sign up for legal protection from deportation, which allowed them to go to school and work. But DACA protection could be undone once Mr. Trump takes office. Now some students and college faculty are asking their administrators to declare their campuses sanctuaries for DACA students. And they want administrators to not cooperate with immigration officials. Sophie, the idea of sanctuary cities and campuses as a very hot political issue. Yeah. Uh, interesting. What, what, in your mind, what is the upside and the downside of becoming a sanctuary campus? From the student's point of view, we know the obvious that it's going to be. Are they really that protected as a sanctuary I'm campus? Gonna, I'm going to say that mm -hmm. I think that declaring yourself a sanctuary campus sends a powerful message to the student body okay. that you are on their side that you support them in the ways that, that they would hope for. I think Gary Carruthers, um, uh, who, down at NMSU, made mm -hmm. a really interesting statement. You know, he's, he's chosen not to make NMSU a sanctuary campus, but he has highlighted that there are a number of privacy protections that are in place for students right. that would make it rather difficult for an ICE agent, for instance, to, to swagger on in and start loading people into, into um, uh, trucks or whatever, but mm -hmm. I, I think um, you know the the question of of is that enough? Is it's really a shifting question under a new president because mm -hmm. some of the protections that we see are like DACA under executive order. Some are policies within Homeland Security and mm -hmm. other and other agencies, um, <clears throat> and and some are the product of local practice. You know, so mm -hmm. San, Santa Fe, for instance, says we're a sanctuary city. That makes it. Much easier for, for instance, the College of Santa Fe. Is it called that still? Or is it called Santa Fe Community College? Thank you, yeah, Santa yeah. Fe Community College, yeah. to, to sort of to um, agree with that. I, I will say, you know, I took a little look at um, the FERPA rules, which are the rules that that govern um, student privacy, privacy of student information. Mm -hmm. And there is a Homeland Security exception for ah. for FERPA. Okay. Um, but most other agencies, I think, all other agencies are not really able to pierce mm -hmm. that. Your old alma mater. New Mexico State. Is it as a proximity issue because of where in Las Cruces it's just a little bit different than in Santa Fe? Do you know what I mean? We're closer to the border. There are potentially more students that are under DACA, perhaps. Is it well, I think it, it argues the the, the, the opposite, mm -hmm. right? If you're if you're a, you know this is New Mexico. Yeah. I, I'd like I ask people to take a look at our state flag and what and what's actually on that flag. Um, uh, this is a land grant university that was right. essentially founded in in the days when we when when the Mexican government and Mexican remember the border sort of crossed a lot of folks. Um, so it's interesting. We talk about the rule of law. We talk about this civil uh, this idea that we're going to really go after people for mm -hmm. for, for cr c committing this cr crazy c civil act, which is trying to get an education and trying to sort of better their their family and their community. And we just had this conversation about police officers taking lives, and and uh, we have a president now who uh, who says I can I can get around taxes and that's okay. Um, I can have huge conflicts of interest, okay. But when you're talking about people exercising, who by the way are from this part of the world, right. mm -hmm. um, part of the, basically exercising a, a gay, again a, a, a basic human right. I, I'm gonna. I'm going to abide by the law. I'm going to, I'm going to get an education. Mm -hmm. I want to feel safe. I don't want to worry that my mom or my sister or anybody's my kid is going to be uh, targeted. And I don't care what's uh, what Mr. Crothers thinks, uh, former Governor Crothers thinks about this. You know, people have been deported in some really, really uh, sketchy situations, mm -hmm. right? At, at work right. and school. And yeah. so, it seems to me if the state of New Mexico, if you know, cannot uh, all the institutions in the state of New Mexico cannot say, look. We are different. We have a different history. Um, we are going to protect people who are here, who are here doing what we tell every American to do: get an education, right. you know, com contribute to your community, do something good with your life. If mm -hmm. we can't do that at New Mexico State, I I'm super dis disappointed. If there was any, you know, I'm going to definitely make my voice known as an alum and so on. I just think, you know, people don't know this. One of the most prominent border research institutions in the country is at New Mexico State. It's where I had my first job doing yeah. research with the Joint Border Research Institute. They study this issue, they get it, and here we are. We have a, <clears throat> a president of the university who's going to say, yeah, we know it's New Mexico. Yeah, we know this is a Langan institution. Yeah, we know that we, we're all about um, U.S.-Mexican relations and U.S.-Mexican culture and history, but we're not going to really do anything special for these right, kids. Right, right. Janice UNM is not on board with this idea so far. 
doesn't look like they're going to be. What do you think about that? Um, I'm, I'm actually okay with that, but, yeah. but, uh, but there are bigger issues here, and so let's not leave the fact that we have been talking about dealing with our immigration issues for, I don't know, as long as I've been alive. That's right. And we've done nothing. <laughs> sure. We've done nothing. Um, and, and it's not without sympathy for these students who are afraid that they are going to lose their education. Right. But there are other answers, and I'm ready to start talking about them. And let me throw one out. Please. Because, you know, <clears throat> children who were brought here, uh, as, as their parents brought them here, and they, mm -hmm. they had nothing to say with this. So why can't we work to, as they cross the, the uh, stage to get their high school diploma, swear them in as U.S. citizens? Ah. Done. Gotcha. And you know what? Make those same classes available to children who are here by birth gotcha. uh, because you know what? You need to know where you come from. We have other options. We seem very narrow on this. But the flip side of this is I am not sure, and I'm not at UNM anymore, and that's my alma mater. Yeah. I don't remember that ICE was uh, uh, or, or Border Patrol was in looking for people. Right. I don't remember that, but I also don't remember caring very much whether or not uh, the university administration made me feel really safe and cozy. Okay. I was just worried about getting to class. Yeah, yeah. There were different times, but you know, yeah. now it could be a little bit different. Daniel, again, you you are a man about the whole state. You grew up south of here, but you live here now in Rio Rancho. Is again, is it better for New Mexico to have this kind of a situation where we have sanctuaries for people? Of course, we've got Santa Fe declaring itself as a sanctuary city, on top of their their schools up there. Does it work out better for New Mexico to have it, have this? No. Uh, okay. It's, I think it's a bad message to send. I think it's it's you know saying that we're going to pick and choose what laws we're going to enforce. We're going to let people enforce some of these laws because we like them. We're going to we're going to be against some of these laws because we really don't think they're comfortable. Um, you know, I think there's no doubt. No doubt in this conversation um, that our immigration policy is flawed. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt that our process to becoming a legal citizen or becoming right. a legal immigrant right. is absolutely horrendous. I mean, people shouldn't take four, five, six years to be able to come here legally and work um, or go to school or try to advance themselves. We are a country of immigrants. All those sayings ring true. But we've also been a country of legal immigrants for a very long time. And at some point, we're going to have to realize either this country is going to make a decision, which I, I think clearly, um, you know, we're seeing the change uh, that, that I don't think the, the people necessarily across the country agree with what Eric and, and, and I are debating, that we're clearly on different sides of the issue. Mm -hmm. Either we're going to move towards a totally open border country, you know, where we're going to have this ebb and flow movement from Canada down through South America, including the United States and, and everything, or we're not. And, and I just don't think that our economy and our country, the way it's set up, um, can, can maintain uh, the, these invisible borders that just move and have this stuff going on. They did. There's no doubt they did back in the day when mm -hmm. people came across for farming and ranching sure. and people moved and sure. families didn't work. But it's a different society today and I think that at some point we've got to fix the immigration problem. The answer isn't thumbing your nose at the federal government and saying, well, we don't care what the rules are. We're going to declare ourselves uh, immune from this. I think to some extent, I think uh, former Governor Carruthers is right, because the one thing I will say you hear from Donald Trump, Donald Trump's response has been, if you don't play by the rules, we're going to take the money from you. And I don't think any university in New Mexico can survive right. if they can't accept Pell Grants point. to get those, that federal dollar. There you go. That's all the time we have, unfortunately. Thank you, guys. Good stuff today. I'm Gene Grant. Thanks for joining us for New Mexico in Focus. We appreciate your time and effort to stay informed and engaged. We'll see you next week in Focus. Funding for New Mexico in Focus provided by the McCune Charitable Foundation and the Nalita E. Walker Fund for KNME-TV, the KNME-TV Endowment Fund, and viewers like you.